Hey guys, we are back with another episode of Let's Color Great. So in this episode five, I thought we would look into getting some cinematic greens because I know a lot of people are struggling with color grading green tones and I definitely was in the beginning as well. So I have two clips with me today. One is shot in the forest with my Canon R6 and then the one is shot in kind of like jungle vibes with my DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So we have one camera clip and one drone clip. So Let's get into it and get started. All right, guys, we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. I have my two clips in here. So we have this forest clip of a branch and we have this other one of my friend Grit walking by a pool, but in these kind of jungle vibes. So we'll just start with this one. We're gonna try and go a little bit quicker today than we usually are, so it's not as long. So hold on tight. The first thing we wanna do is we are gonna make a note tree here and I'm just gonna make a few notes. I don't know if we're going to do any masking, but let's just make it anyway. And we are going to keep it simple today. So I'm just going to do a normal conversion here. And let's see if we go Rick 09 and Gamma 2.4. And here we go. And why this note is up here is that usually I would actually do another conversion up here and go into the DaVinci Gamma color space. There will be a video up on that very soon. So for this video, we'll just stick to this. And then probably the next episode of Let's Color Grade will have that integrated. So the first thing after our conversion, which is in the end, we'll do is that we will do a pretty harsh contrast here. So we'll just drag this curve down here and this curve up. And it looks way too underexposed now, and that's fine. So we will just go in and then pull up the offset. And that already made it a lot more cinematic just with that. So pulling in a lot of contrast with the custom curve and then pulling up the offset afterwards balances that. If you have two overexposed highlights and even shadows, you can play around with that. And one thing that I forgot to do is that I kind of wanted to make it a little bit more cinematic. So I want to soften both the highlights and the shadows. All right. So with that, let's jump into the hue versus hue. Let's just see what happens if we kind of try and mark all of these green colors. That kind of gave us the red tones over here. So let's see what happens. Nothing really happens. That means it wasn't really that good of a selection. What if we just click on this green? That looks a lot better. That kind of shows us as well this curve that that's where most of our colors lie. Let's just see. I kind of want to make it a bit more of this very saturated green. And that's because when we then go into the hue versus set here, I kind of want to just desaturate that to give it this really moody look. And also the same thing the same thing here in the blue. Oops, we don't want to do that. And then just drag that down quite a bit as well. Then let's go back to the hue versus hue and try and see if we want to adjust this a little bit like so. I think that's pretty good for the hue and we haven't touched anything else because in this particular one, it's mostly just green colors. Let's go to our sixth node here and just push some blue or teal into the lift. I kind of want to go like that. So minus 0 0.02 on the reds and one on each of the green and the blues. And then I kind of want to do the opposite here. So just want to drag that up a little bit, maybe still towards the more yellows and drag it down a little bit again. And that gives us a very kind of blue green vibe. I think that looks quite cinematic. Then for our seventh note, I want to go in to the lock wheel I kind of just want to push the shadows down a little bit, maybe push a little bit more blue into it. Now it's maybe getting a little bit too blue. And then we might want to go back up to our curves here and just see if we want to adjust it a little bit. So I kind of want to pull it back to get it a little bit more towards the greens. Maybe look at the saturation as well. Kind of pull a little bit of the saturation back and this gives us this kind of like cinematic green, bluish green that I really like. And I think that looks pretty good. So with only a few clicks, we went from this more kind of yellow teal, which is also what we can see in the curves here, to this more green, blue, teal cinematic one. I really like that. So if we're just going to do some very quick masking here, let's 
make a quick mask. I just made another video on my three favorite masks that I always do. So this will be some of them, but you can watch that video as well. Click Shift H, see what we are marking here. So let's just drag it a little bit out like so. Make sure that nothing is too overexposed and highlights. So just doing it kind of like this, not pushing anything too far, kind of like how that looks. And then see if we want to maybe push a little bit of warmth into the camera like so, kind of like that. Maybe pull it up a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And then just another simple mask here. Just gonna go in and give this a little bit more counterbalance see where we are at. I think that's probably pretty good. Then do the opposite here. So we'll just want to drag up the shadows a little bit and then drag down everything. That was too much. Now it gets way too faded. So something like that is better. And something like that looks good. Maybe drag the camera down a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty decent. Maybe we even want to go even lower like this and then pull it back up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And then for the last one, we could actually just go in and make a curve here because we don't want this branch to be all too affected and underexposed. So let's just make a little bit more contrast here, pull that down, but then pull the highlights and the mid tones up quite a bit more like so, and then maybe give it a little bit more gamma, not too much, and then pull down the lift a little bit, just to kind of emphasize what that looks like. And I think that's pretty good. Like, so the mask pretty much just changed the light. And we also got rid of this. This looks very blue and teal, but now that we warmed up this side and pulled down the brightness of this side, it kind of like balanced it out a little bit. So that helps with our cinematic look. So I think that's pretty good. Just looking at this. Yeah, I like how that looks. Okay, onto our second clip. What I want to try and do first is I kind of just want to try and copy this. So I'll just click Command C, Command V. And that looks pretty all right from the get go. The only thing is I want to change this because this is obviously d -lock and not from my Canon camera. And that should make it a little bit darker. So I might want to go in and I don't want to actually play around with the contrast, but I kind of just want to pull up the lift here a little bit and then pull down the gain as well. That looks a lot better already. And I kind of already like how this look is. So let's just try and turn off the mask and then see how it works. That also made quite a difference. I actually think we want to do this the other way around. So before I turn the monic off again, just want to change the lighting situation here change the masks around because the light was coming from the other side in this scene. That looks a lot better. And this one we want to pull to the subject in the middle, kind of like this instead. And maybe that's a bit much. So maybe just dragging down the gamma a little bit. That's a lot better. Okay. So with a few adjustments, we also went in here and did quite a bit of work. Now I'm pulling up a lot of different things. Okay, so let's just see what this actually did. So let's turn off everything here. So we went from a log image that looks like this, just zoom a little bit, converted it to this, then adding the contrast way too dark, pulling up the offset, but then playing around a little bit with the lift in the game. It looks pretty good. It still is a bit overexposed, but that's how the shot was because it didn't expose it correctly. So that's just how it is. You can see that the greens are affected a little bit here. The yellows are getting more green. So let's just see how the tone curve looks here and it's a lot more flat out. So what we could do is that we could extend this out a little bit and then just drag all the greens down because the greens lie a little bit more towards the green in uh, inside this this image drag down all the greens over here and then do the same thing with the luminance kind of like this so that made a little bit of a bigger difference overall then pulling in our left and gamma here it gives that faded kind of tealish look 
doing it a little bit more, pulling down the shadows and putting in a little bit more blue. And then our masking situation down here just changes up the lighting, makes it a little bit more moody on the left side and gives us kind of this changed light perception. And now that I see it again, kind of still think that we went a little bit too overboard in here. So let's just actually drag down our gamma a little bit and then we still have our curve in here. So I think that looks a lot better. So that's actually how you can make some cinematic greens. You saw the curve, that's what we did in here. Pull down the greens. We had to change the hue a little bit between the two because it was a lot in the yellows for the first shot and a little bit more towards the greens in this one. So we just changed that around a little bit. Then we went in and we gave some teal and blue in the lift, pulled it back in the gamma just to create this color contrast. And then we went in to the lock wheel and we just pulled down the shadows a little bit to give it some more depth. And we also pulled in some more blue tealish color. We didn't do anything with the mid-tone and the highlights. And then we just changed the lighting situation with the free masks. So that's basically all we did for this one. I wanted to try and keep this quite short as some of the other Let's Color Grade has been way over 20 minutes. So I thought let's make it a little more simple. If it was too fast, then go back, watch some of the steps again. But in theory, the only things that we did is added some hard contrast, changed the exposure to accommodate that, played around with the hue, the sat and luminance of the colors, especially the greens in this case for this video, then pulled some teal bluish into the lift and then countered it in the gamma so that it wasn't too obvious and too much. And then we did the same thing with the shadows. We just took down the shadows a little bit and pulled in some more teal. And that's pretty much it. Then we did the masking. I have another video on masking as well. That's the same tips, a little bit more in depth, but we basically just emphasized the highlights, pulled down the shadows a little bit, made sure that nothing was under or overexposed, at least for what we did for our adjustments. We couldn't really save the second clip in terms of the highlights. And then we just emphasize the subject a little bit, whether that being the branch in the middle or the subject of my friend Brett in this case. So that's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if that was a bit too much for you, you can also check out my free LUT. I have a free cinematic LUT. Doesn't really change around the colors, but I have a Cinepack coming out very soon. So if you're watching this video far in the future from when this was recorded, the Cinepack should be out and you should be able to get that. And that's basically just with a few clicks, you can achieve something like what we've just done today. You can also watch my other videos on how to use cinematic LUTs. That will show you the same thing. So without rambling anymore, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.